What's up, everyone? I just got off the line with American Americana artist Christina Vane. We talked her hometown, birthplace of Turin, Italy, being raised between England, France, Italy, participating in choirs, playing banjo, guitar, discovering the slide guitar, the fascination with Skip James, Robert Johnson, Blind Willie Johnson, Alanis Morissette, Rory Block, relocating to Nashville, Tennessee, American Idol experience, her debut album, Nowhere Sounds Lovely, and more. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Christina. Christina, hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for coming on the show. And uh, I need to start off by talking about, because it's not every day that you get to meet people that have been born in different countries. Um, because I was doing some research on you and you were born in Turin, Italy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, tell, tell me about that. Um, well, you said it. I was born there. <laughs> so what? which part would you like me to tell you about? um i would i would love to hear more about like your your life growing up in in those parts yeah um so i was born in italy and when i was three i moved to england and when i was six i moved to paris and then i moved back to italy for middle school and uh back to paris for the rest of my high school and then i came to the united states for college at 18. yeah that's uh that's really interesting and and do you think that with your career now that you're having, do you think those experiences in in Paris and Italy have really like sh sort of like shaped who you are? Um, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I sound and look and am half or American. My dad is Italian American, but um, I grew up, you know, in Europe between several different places, but there's a very different sensibility. There's a different way of looking at the world. There's a different way of looking at things like healthcare and uh, the government and food and all these different things. So it has definitely shaped who I am. Yeah, absolutely. And um, talk to me more about your, your musical childhood. Was was music just all around the house for you? And, and what kind of uh, people were you looking out to in terms of music? So we listened to a lot of music in my house but my parents were not musicians my dad is was a musician when he was younger in the sense that he like played instruments and wanted to be a musical actor um but he didn't pursue that and ended up going into a different sort of trajectory because you know he had a family and he uh had my mom and him were i think either just newly married or whatever. And so he took a job that took him to, took them to Europe and never got to pursue that, but he's extremely musical. And my mom is not musical, but she loves listening to music. So I sort of just would sit in the car with them and listen to a lot of their favorite bands. And we went to some shows and things like that, but we weren't like a musical family in the sense that um, we're not in like a family band or anything like that. Um, they always encouraged music and learning instruments and being in choir and being in the school orchestra and that kind of thing yeah and and was was the environment of of being in choir sort of that stepping stone for you to really elevate your your musical knowledge um i think it was probably more the private lessons like piano and then eventually the flute for me um and actually in middle school i went to uh a a small music school in the town we lived in like after school so it had nothing to do with our normal school i went there for voice lessons it was a couple really called um manuela and alberto tensi and this, the school was called scuola di musica tensi which is their last name and it was just the two of them it was a small building and he taught music theory in italian and she taught voice and eventually I did six months of classical guitar with him and that's like was my first sort of endeavor into guitar playing yeah and obviously like living in Italy and living in Paris there's probably got to be like some sort of opera related music uh, I mean around Italy and, and Paris because I feel like in Italy it's more of the opera sound because there's people like Andrea Bocelli um and those types of artists do you feel like those were also a part of your your childhood growing up of listening to those types of music no not really opera is sort of a very specific thing um i never liked it growing up to be honest 
Yeah. Um, honestly, because I think you're you're really into the country blues sound. Um, talk to me more about the the musical inspirations in in that re- realm. Um, so it started with a woman named Rory Block, who is an amazing guitar player and singer. She's still alive right now, so she's more of a contemporary artist. She's a little older, but she um can play pretty much all of my heroes very well. Like she has instructional videos on Robert Johnson. She has tribute albums to Skip James and to Mississippi John Hurt. And that's where I first heard, you know, more of Skip James and got really into the Delta Blues stuff through her. And uh, then I found Blind Willie Johnson, I think by looking up Led Zeppelin's uh, In My Time of Dying, which is Basically, Blind Willie Johnson didn't write, uh, you know, the original, which is just a traditional spiritual called Jesus Make Up My Dying Bed slash In My Time of Dying, but he was the first to record it. So that path led me to him and I fell in love with both of those people and have continued to just kind of keep digging around. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, was there any significance of being raised or, or growing up in between like England, France and Italy? Was there just any sort of thing that just stuck out to you about living in those parts of the world? Um, in what sense exactly do you mean? Um, like, um, how do I really describe this? Um, I think it's um, when when you when you're living in places between England, France, and Italy, um, there's got to be a lot of those cultural aspects of uh of of the world, I guess, in a sense. Um, can you talk more about how that sort of influenced um, just your life growing up? Um, yeah, I guess I'm not exactly sure, you know, what to touch on. Um, I kind of mentioned some of the stuff with your first question, like just the general approach to public spaces, to public health, um, food, culture is pretty different. Yeah, absolutely. And then also you you moved to the US in at 18, I think. Mm-hmm. Um uh so how's how's that uh that that trek from I guess the move from Paris or Italy then come to the states to attend college you said. Mm-hmm. Um what was what was that sort of like that move like for you? Um it was a pretty intense culture shock actually because uh you know, just because I like uh, sound American, especially, um, it was very confusing. And they did have like a international pre-orientation for the international students, which was literally meant to sort of orient you. Um, they had whole like lectures on how to interpret American mannerisms and things that people say here. And, um, because you know there's a very specific culture and way of interacting here that's pretty different from europe and the food was like a really big one that still sometimes gets me uh just because i really love french and italian food and i also think um the sourcing of ingredients can be really good over there it can be good here too but things just don't always taste the same so um stuff like that uh was was definitely a learning curve um learning how to party with people that um had never drank alcohol on their own or were like abusing alcohol and we had all been drinking in paris for years at that point um so it wasn't like oh let's just get a giant bottle of vodka and drink it warm it was like you could kind of drink it to enjoy it of course people and kids in paris get drunk and over drink but um it felt like a very different sort of social climate and party climate in college where it was like a lot about excess and blacking out and all these things where that's like kind of intense and uh, a lot to be doing every weekend yeah absolutely and i i, I want to touch on something interesting you're talking about um I mean, the the transition between uh, the different styles of tastings of food, I guess, in in a sense of 
uh, when you're talking about Italy and Paris and just a different taste and con- contrast of food um, compared to the U.S. Um, here in Canada, I mean, like I'm Tibetan and I have like different like styles of food that I, I eat culturally. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, when I go to a restaurant that is Tibetan, and those things like that, I'm saying, man, this does not taste like anything like home. You know, totally. like it just doesn't like sometimes I feel like I will say like this, t- this style of food is, is so fake um, in a way. Yeah. And then and then when I go to like, you know, there's there's like an Italian bakery here um, and I go there and I'm like, man, this is actually an authentic one because they're not making it like they're it's not like store bought. Like, you know what I mean? It's like they actually make it from hand. You know, it's it's just not something that like usual people do. But. I like when people can just make it from scratch and then all of a sudden it's just a fresh type of food, not like some store-bought frozen stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I want to talk about, um, I mean, you, you worked at McCabe's Guitar Shop. Um, what was what was that experience like? Did that help you sort of navigate into the music world and get you more immersed into that experience? Yeah, uh, definitely. McCabe's Guitar Shop was a huge stepping stone for me. I learned a lot. I found my guitar mentor there who taught me how to play fingerstyle guitar. And I also bought my resonator, which I still play on, and my banjo there. And um, just soaked in a lot of knowledge from the technicians in the guitar shop, from the other sales people on the floor about instruments, about people about history especially in california and in um you know in mccabe's because there is a concert venue it turns into a concert venue and they've had some really truly amazing people play there so kind of just getting all of that was really nice yeah and then you you were just you discovered the instrument of slide guitar um at the age of 20. um what was it about that instrument that just stuck out to you um I don't even really know what drew me to it. That's the question that sometimes is funny to answer because it's kind of like, it's like someone asking like, why do you like chocolate? You don't know, you just like it, right? Um, And that's how I feel about the slide. I hadn't really, I'd heard it, I'm sure, but not really realized that's what it was. I never like singled it out on the Leonard Skinner songs or whatever, where it was probably, you know, first in my periphery. But um, then I saw it live in London with this band called Sam Green and the Midnight Heist. And I was like, that is really cool. And I want to learn how to do that. And so I just Googled it and taught myself how to play slide. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I love listening to people like Patty Page. Um, I, I recently got onto it. It was Tennessee Waltz and Mockingbird Hill. And I was listening to one of the, I was watching one of the videos on Country Road TV and like they're playing the steel guitar on it. And I'm like, wow, this instrument just sounds so beautiful in a way. Um, and, and it's like, I've, I've, I've heard instruments like the dobro, um, the resonator and those things like that. But I feel like I'm more drawn to the steel guitar sound of it, um, I guess. Um, but would there be, I mean, other than the flute and the guitar and, the banjo was it just, was there anything that you wish to play that you want to play now um i have uh, i like i tried learning violin in middle school and i really hated it so i stopped and i kind of wish that i had maybe stuck with it just to now be able to fiddle some tunes uh because it's extremely difficult and it's also demoralizing now so But I kind of am like have my hands full with guitar probably for a lifetime. So I just don't feel like I need to be seeking out new obstacles. Yeah, absolutely. And and when was the when did you move to Nashville, so to speak? I moved to Nashville like in 2018. Okay. So so what was what was that transition like for you to um to get your feet wet, I guess, in, in in terms of the music city? Um, which is Nashville, obviously. Um, would you would you say Nashville is is pretty much what they call Music City? Because I feel like a lot of people can say Music City for almost every single city. Um, because yeah, can... but it's it's our uh, it's been the slogan of this city, kind of like officially, if that makes any sense, for a long time. I mean, so there are a lot of musical cities, but Nashville is literally called Music City, like on the sign when you drive into Tennessee. It's, you know, Nashville, Music City. 
Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, like I've always wanted to go to Nashville, haven't been there, still trying to go there. Um, but obviously you went on American Idol. Um, but it it wasn't was it just like you signing up or was it them finding you? Um, they reached out to me when I was on tour and I went to an audition in New Orleans in twenty twenty eighteen, same year I moved. So so what was what was what was that sort of that reaction like when when you kind of got that uh, that call or or a notification from American Idol um, to audition? Um, I basically told them that I couldn't audition because I wasn't I was tour I was moving around like every week or so, and then they were like, "Well, we have auditions in a lot of cities, and how would you like to come to this?" And I was like, "Sure." I mean, always say yes to different things and new experiences, so I did it. Yeah, and and what was what was that experience like? Um, it was interesting. I went to the audition. I got a yes, and that means that then you go to the televised auditions, uh, which those were in Louisville, Kentucky, and much later they were like in November. And then I got through those, so I got the golden ticket, and I went to LA to film and i think i got eliminated like halfway through hollywood week but i never made it on tv so none of this really happened according to tv <laughs> yeah i like I, i was i was i was kind of weirded out with it because i was kind of like looking for the videos of your audition um and then and it just doesn't show and you're so right about you know like when people say that you were supposed to be on tv but it didn't show you on tv and it's like this this whole thing um but when when did when did it become a I mean, when did it become abundantly clear to you that you wanted to become a country blues type artist? Um, I don't think I ever wanted to become a country blues type artist. And I don't actually think that I nec- I think that you're not wrong in describing me with those words, but um, I've been pretty adamant to not be called like a blues or only old time player because um i don't feel that i am i feel like there's a lot of music i make that is rock based and it has a lot of country blues in it or my album has a few tunes that are very country blues inspired for sure and i love that style of music and my personality online especially in the covers that i do on instagram are heavily skewed in that direction because i take a lot of influence from it i love that style of music i love that style of playing um, so it's going to seep into my music, but I don't really consider myself purely country blues because then where is there room there for, you know, banjo songs or rock songs or hill country or country, which all of which have kind of appeared at different points in my albums. Yeah, absolutely. And and obviously your your debut album, I want to talk about Nowhere Sounds Lovely. Um Walk me through how that uh, how that came together. Um, I had just gotten off the road and I wanted to make an album when I moved to Nashville. And I had a few different producers that I was talking to. Cactus was one of them. And I really loved the uh, the last thing he had done for Winona, which had a, a very heavy mix of like Appalachian folk style with some like rock. And that's kind of exactly to my point just now what I was looking for, someone who could blend all the things I liked and all these new things that I was getting really into with, you know, just rock, which is what I grew up with. Um, so yeah, so I asked him if he'd do the album. He said yes, and I recorded it, and then I put it out. Yeah, that's uh, that's really exciting, and um, it was, you yeah. you, you, also, you also have this um, this tenuous relationship with the identity and place, so to speak. Um, what What is that about? Um, it's because I moved around a lot and I have a lot of identities and places that I claim that, you know, don't necessarily claim me. Um, and a lot of people are from one place or born and raised in one place. And I certainly am not. So that's that. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you feel like you, you still have that sort of that battle between the relationship of identity and a place? 
Yeah, I don't think it, it will ever go away because I will always have had the upbringing that I had. Yeah, absolutely. And and obviously, we we're we're talking about um you you didn't want to be described a a country blues type artist, but you said you have more of the rock style, country rock style in your music. Um, but how do you how do you really define genre? Um, I would call my music Americana because it allows room for all of those things. Yeah, I I, I feel like it it would definitely be Americana. Um, because I feel like a lot of people can get that confused sometimes with different artists. I know Clint Black, I remember watching one of his videos and he explained his story of becoming a country artist. And he went to this, I think this rock concert, I think of Shotgun Red. And he said, um, one of the band members says, oh no, you're not, you're not rock, you are country. Um, and so do you, do you feel like a lot of people kind of get that mixed up with with you being a country blues artist rather than a country rock artist? Uh, so I wouldn't really call myself a country rock artist either. I don't play a lot of country music. Um, country blues is not country and blues. I mean, in, in a way it is, but it's like its own specific sound, which is a little bit different from the Delta blues sound, but it's, it's a kind of blues music. Country rock, I guess, would mean somewhat country, somewhat rock. I don't really play country music very much. Um, I would, again, just call myself an Americana artist. Yeah, right, right. And, and so um, this is this is such an interesting thing. I mean, a lot of people, um, I think, feel afraid to to talk about um, their sense of belonging, or, you know, identity battles. Um, But do you feel like you've, you've now established that identity for yourself of of being that Americana artist? Um, yeah, I just, honestly, I don't really worry about it. And, you know, if someone like you wants to discuss it, I'm happy to discuss it. But like, I, uh, I just make music. So I'm really a musician. And I leave it up to, you know, PR to the album to the producers to worry about genre, but my, my, my albums have a lot of genres in them. Um, and I have a lot of uh, people that I look up to that make different kinds of music and play different instruments. And I just don't really care, to be honest. Like, uh, you know, I, I, there obviously is a tangible and important real world sort of label that people use to differentiate between things. But my music's very multifaceted. So it kind of just depends on which song you're listening to. And most people, honestly, uh, are not really super well-versed in music history. They might know certain things, non-musicians, especially listeners. Some of them are. And then lots of other people are like, oh, you play bluegrass. And I'm like, no. I mean, yeah, I sometimes play bluegrass songs and I've played some bluegrass shows, but my recorded music is a very big mix of things. And to call it all bluegrass would be just, you know, missing most of the point. So I let people describe it how they want to describe it. Um, obviously, if someone said I play funk music, I would be like, well, that's just flat out wrong because I don't play funk music or soul music or metal or things like that. Those are obvious ones. But when you get to the more nuanced discussion, it's sort of like, there's a little bit of old time, there's a little bit of country blues, there's a little bit of hill country blues, there's some rock, um, and uh, there's some folk and songwriter stuff, uh, too. And that's how I like it. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I want to I wanna also um, just uh, wrap up with a few questions. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, now that like you've really described um, who you are as an artist, I want to know... Um, what is your happy place? Um, my happy place, there's a few of them. Uh, writing a good song and like that moment of like, oh, wow, I really like what I just put out. Um, recording an album and finishing it is an extremely happy feeling. Sharing it with the world and putting it out is another one. And being on stage is something that I really derive a lot of joy from. Just playing to people especially if there happen to be some people in the audience, that's always nice. So yeah, those are all things that make me really happy. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and do you feel like all of those like 
experiences that you were just talking about that just now g- gives you that freedom to now express yourself in your in your art um, and express yourself as a person. Definitely. I think that is uh, one of the most amazing things about being a creative is that you it's a privilege and it's really lucky to be able to express yourself creatively for a job. So I try not to lose sight of that. Absolutely. And and obviously, you, you probably have a lot of experiences. And obviously, I want to know what is the what is the experience that you would want to relive over again? Um, it's kind of a tie for me. An obvious one would be like opening for Bob Weir at the Fillmore. That was unbelievable. And I would like to live that again. But I, um, I feel like some of the travels I did on that journey in 2018, like being able to see Utah for the first time again, the way I did or Bryce Canyon or all of these places that really blew my mind. Glacier Park, some of those experiences, it, I would relive those in a second. Yeah. And, and was there ever the, that dream of you to play the Grand Ole Opry one day? Um, that would be awesome. That'd yeah, be very, very cool. because because I, I feel like I've I've um seen some things about you that you're talking about. You wanted to, I guess, uh, get that dream uh, bucket list item uh, checked off your list. And obviously, that's that's I feel like that's a dream of any artist in general to to really yeah. uh, play that play that one show or that one song on that stage. Um, and so do you feel now with with who you with where your career is at now? Do you feel gratified by everything? Um, I feel grateful for everything that I've got. That doesn't mean I'm fully satisfied, but this is more of a spiritual question than a musical one, really, because some people learn how to be satisfied with what they have and other people keep searching. And so that's just a personal place I'm at. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and so what would you say is um the most personal out of body experience you've had in music um probably playing in nature by myself yeah absolutely and like i was i was going to ask you that earlier in the interview about the um if you ever felt like playing in the environment really helped um i i guess hone in on your craft more and and influence the songs you write and the instruments that you play um i think that the craft part happens with around and from other people actually so i'd say nashville being being like surrounded by really good players and being pushed to improve your craft which happens with just hard work and practice um versus like the environment as in nature can influence the sounds i'm making or the songwriting direction i'm taking but i'd often wouldn't sit for two hours with a metronome in nature if that makes any sense i would do that at home absolutely absolutely and and so what would you okay so i want to wrap up with this last question and the question is if you were to play with anybody um who is already in heaven who would it be and what song would you play oh that's a really hard one because I mean, I would really love to meet Blind Willie Johnson. I would really, really love that. And I would love to play any of his songs. I've done, I've had to learn quite a few because I did a Blind Willie Johnson tribute a few years back. And um, if if any of these people would play with me, that's like more what I would be worried about and be intimidated by. But if that's not part of the equation, then I would say Blind Willie Johnson probably. He seems like um, an unbelievable person and may, and Jesse May Hemphill too. She seems like a lot of fun and she had so much style and rhythm and really cool riffs. So one of those two guys, gals, people. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, if you were to give any piece of advice to other aspiring young artists um, like yourself, who, what would you advise them? Um, I would advise them to all the corny stuff, really, just to keep at it and to try and find their truest voice, which 
isn't always easy actually especially when you are into different kinds of music or you're learning different kinds of music um i don't know i, I just really believe in being like authentically yourself and i think that humans are really good at sniffing that out and they can kind of tell when you're not and so um as long as you're being true to yourself and making stuff you want to make hopefully hard work pays off right yeah absolutely well we've come to the end of this interview but thank you so much for chatting with me thank you so much um, for having me to the listeners who made it this far into the episode thanks so much for sticking around i hope you joined my conversation with americana artist um christina vane if you want to connect with christina you can find her on instagram facebook twitter youtube and on tiktok to help support my show please feel free to share it with family friends or on social media you can also connect with me on instagram twitter facebook tiktok and on youtube i've been your host shikmi keltsing thanks for tuning into the show mm-hmm.